All right. Welcome to another stream. One second. All right. Let me just share this as usual. All right. Share, share. We're going to be working on the pig some more today. This awesome Bye. pig. Thank you. <clears throat> share in a group. Share, share. Hmm. I don't know what happened to the group. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Page. There we go. Found it. <laughs> it was kind of hiding a little bit. All right. There we go. Got it. All right. And done. Okay. Hey, guys. Switch over to my chat page so I can read your chats. All right. So there's a bunch of stuff that I want to do to this guy after looking at it. Um, just to get, in, get it closer to uh, Sandro's concept here. Um, yeah, so it'll, it might, I'm going to be kind of slowing down today a little bit uh, because I'm in the polish phase. Usually my sculpts go pretty quickly, but um, today this is going to be a little bit slower. Let me check this out. Let's see. And... I think I'm going to make his little toe tips, separate pieces, <laughs> toe tips, whatever you want to call them. So how you guys doing today? Hey, what's up? Thanks, Neil. Okay. Maybe. Sure. Um, split this off. Maybe, uh, let's go kind of dark blue. Sure. <clears throat> I'm doing well, thanks. Considering, you know, all considering. The world's on fire. <laughs> but other than that, it's great. I'm just kidding. Well, I'll get through this. Kind of helps to sculpt and lose yourself in uh, in some art. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. All right, pig, pig toe tips. <laughs> there we go. That looks better than what I, what I was trying to do last time. Oh goodness, you work in a supermarket. How how has that been? Do you have to wear masks and gloves and all the business? Hope so. St hope you're staying safe. From Columbia, hello. Welcome to the stream, guys. All right. Okay, let's give him these little, he's got these little kind of boots on, and then um, we need to make this tunic thing. And give him some, uh, give him a collar, that kind of stuff. So let's make his little booties first. Getting a lot of models done, right? <laughs> yep, it's a good time to get models done. Oh, goodness. No kidding. Okay, let's see what this, I think this, yeah, this foot is Sculptor's Pro, so I'm just going to make it again uh, okay, 
right, what is going on here? Let's split this off. I'm trying to split this boot off. Doesn't want to do it. There we go. Okay. Got it, got it. There we go. All right, and then we'll just kind of uh, mold these boots. <laughs> they look like little little baby booties, piggy baby booties. I'm listening to a little Cascade today. If you have ever heard of Cascade, it starts with a K. He's a kind of a DJ. He has these guest singers that help him out. And uh, I just, I just love the vibe of it um, to work to. It's just really, really clean and kind of drum and bass a little bit. Um, okay, let's see, let's do a Z modeler a little bit. <clears throat> and you can go poly group a single poly and then just kind of reassign what you want to extrude. It's kind of tedious because it's one at a time, but uh, let's see, one, two, three, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Maybe, maybe one more row. Oops. Gotta be careful not to click on the edges because it'll insert an edge loop. That's not what we want. So something like this. Now we can just go extrude, polygroup all. Bring that up. Uh, maybe not so much. Just pop it and then now we can pull it up and just kind of shape it to our liking. Okay. Um, we can kind of hide, whoops, we can hide the opening there, delete it. Hey, what's up, Tenchi? ZBrush been giving ZBrush, give you a color close to the color you are already making it hard to see on the stream. Oh, you're, you're having a hard time seeing this? Here, let's color it up. Let's make it, um, let's give him some brown, brownish, like light brownish boots, maybe. Is that better? Okay, I'm going to do a couple of edge loops in here. Brown boots. Then I can just kind of smooth it out around here like this. Make it look like it wasn't an extruded piece. It's just part of it. Okay, and then this little flappy flap. Just kind of pull it out and pull it back. The thing, you know, um, well, I was going to say the, the thing with smoothing like this, um, it, it won't smooth the open edge. So you have to kind of adjust these by hand. And then you can smooth to it. I want to lower the sides. I 
can smooth this out. Put it all in one. Poly group, I don't need them separate groups anymore. Okay. And I want to clip the bottom off just a little bit. Um, straighten it out first. <laughs> just maybe like this and then smooth it back out. There. You can see it was just saying zebrush being zebrush give you a color very close to the one already being used in the poly group. So are, is that a question? Are, are you not able to see it still, Neil? Being a, still hard to see. Okay, now that I have this shoe uh, kind of made, I'm going to put it better in place and then tweak the foot to match it. You can see it? Okay, cool. And it looks like they're on backwards. Let's put the... Okay, there we go. Now let's make the, the leg match the boot a little more. Very tiny little legs. <laughs> um... I want to make his legs a little longer actually so okay there we go that's looking good stumpy pig legs <laughs> all right am i liking those i'm trying to decide if i like those i think so Be a little more open on the front and back. Okay. And I kind of like how Sandro's pinched them right down to the ends there. So I'm going to pull the tip a little bit and smooth this out so you kind of end in more of a tip. I like that. All right, now let's let's work on the tunic a bit. I want to make the sleeves larger. Wish you guys could hear the music I'm listening to. It's so good. It is. Um, it's called Cascade uh, Sweet Love. It's good. This. It's awesome. <laughs> Tenchi, I'm doing well, thanks. All things considering, you know. Um, it's It's actually been pretty good for the course because a lot of people are deciding to take this this time out or time off or whatever you want to call it to increase their skills. So it's been pretty good as far as um, new students joining the course and stuff like that. So that's been good. A lot of great work going on over there. Yeah, Neil. I, I love that uh, Wiley Coyote somebody posted. I'm trying to remember who posted it. Um, Anton, I think. Angelo. Angelo. I think it was Angelo. Yeah, super cool. I can show you guys really fast if you want to see it. It's just a blockout. So it's like the power of blockouts. 
Yeah, check this out. Awesome. So good. Angelo Martin did it. Yeah. Shout out to Angelo. Looking awesome. So good. All right. <laughs> That's over in my student forum of the 3D Character Workshop. So if you're interested in joining us over there, you can check it out, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Um, I still have the 10% off promotion going on right now. If you use the coupon code BESAFE, B-E-S-A-F-E, -E, no space. Check that out. Other Angelo. <laughs> nice. Good name. Okay. And I want to pull this up. Oh, thanks, Tenchi. Okay. Um... Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so let's solo this. And I want to fill holes just for a second. So close holes. Oops. <laughs> Before I do that, I'm going to grab this color so it doesn't do. Because it's going to, when I close holes, it's going to use whatever color I have active to do it. And the reason I want to close holes is because it's easier to extrude um, a piece like this. I hope so. Yeah, they're great. There's been a lot of... So I, I have a an ongoing kind of student challenge thing called Saturday Morning Cartoons that um, it just gives people a reason to practice... Um, sim simplistic characters. I'm going to mirror and weld this just so it's symmetrical right there. Um, let me flip it first. Okay. Mirror. Mirror and weld. That's better. There we go. Okay. Um, tension. I don't know. I need to. I still need to pull it in. I switched computers and I switched my setup. I redid my whole hard drive. So I set everything up again on OBS and I forgot to grab my logo, which is super important. And I forgot it. But yeah, thanks. I need to. I need to get that done. Okay, extrude polygroup all. Let's turn this off for a moment. Let's pull this down. Whoop. Okay. Hey, what's up, Chris? Okay, now I'm gonna grab this, and pull it out, make it look more like a that tunic. Yeah, ZBrush is offering a 30-day trial right now, which is great. Okay, I think I'm done with these extra bits. So I can go ahead and hide them and delete them. And then I want to put this little notch in there. Insert edge loop. And I think I can split this. It's kind of a backwards way of doing it, but. I kind of want to keep quads. So I'm just going to do it like this. Right. Oh, hey, what's up, David? Okay, and I'm going to just draw the collar on top. And his, I feel like his chin is a little too gigantic now. And um, this is still in Sculptor's Pro mode. So let's clean up this scene a little bit. I need to go here and then here. Go. 
Um, delete this. Okay. Um, can I tell again about the side cut skirt? Um, all I did was um, I used the Z modeler brush and I hovered over a point and if you hit the space bar there's this thing called split and then you can click and drag on a point and it will make us this little kind of half circle and then I just deleted these two polys and then reshaped it. I know it's kind of a backwards way of doing it. Um, that's yeah, there's so many different ways to do it. <laughs> okay, um da, 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 what am I doing? Um oh I wanted to I want to clean up his head here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try and Z remesh this and see what we get here. Um, sure, let's try it. Target, I don't want to keep groups, do I? Uh, yeah, I'll try keeping the groups around here. Let's, let's make some more. If we're going to, if we're going to do this, let's do it for real. I don't know that it's going to matter. Let's, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it just without it. Let's go. Try it. Um, let's go fifteen thousand. Oh, let's try it. It's probably going to destroy it, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> tick tick tick. Hope it doesn't make my stream choke. <laughs> Ah, not bad, not bad at all. All right. Yep, pray to the Z remesher gods, that's right. Okay, that'll work. Z remesher gods delivered today. Um, now we can project. From one to the other. Okay, project all, yes. And let's, um, yeah, that works. I'm happy with that. Now it's no longer sculptress, sculptress mess. It's actually kind of clean, cleanish. I mean, it doesn't wrap around the sides of the mouth or anything like that, but it's a good sculpting mesh. So we can live with that. Okay. Um, and the reason I wanted to do that is just because it's easier to do larger movements when the mesh is cleaner. Like this. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's draw the draw that collar on there. Using the topology brush. Uh, let me look at this first, actually. Yeah, there's not really a nice... I was going to say, sometimes for a collar, I will use existing geometry, but it's kind of messed up with this diamond right here. Um, so I'll just draw it on like I said I would. Okay, and plus his neck is clear down here. I think I'm going to take his head and just squish the entire thing. Come on. There. Gosh, it wouldn't grab it for some reason. Just 
need to make I'm making room for the collar right here above his arms. Pulling this down a little bit and in. I can get rid of the body on the inside of the tunic here in a little bit. Okay, um, let's see. Hey, Saeed, how's it going? Okay, let's see. So, to draw his collar, just use a topology brush and I'm going to kind of draw it a little bit underneath and bigger than, I, than it should be. And then I'll edit it after the fact. Now that I have that, just I'll start drawing the vertical lines. There we go. And we can just clean it up. You can just do it by holding down Alt and dragging on the surface like that. And then uh, changing your draw size down to one and then tapping on the surface, there we go. And then you can do split to unmask points. Arrow down and you can kind of see the collar now within, within there. So now I can just edit it and kind of put it in place a little bit more. And it's finally springtime here outside. It's a super nice day. I'm gonna go spend some time outside after this. Away from other people. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, I wanna make this collar kind of bigger in the front and then get smaller as it goes up and over the arms here. There we go. That's a bit lumpy. Let's clean that up still. Milne Sutar, hey man. Thanks so much. I, I don't know if I'd say that, but fun. You have summer weather? <laughs> hey, what's up, Ian? All right. Just doing my thing, sculpting a pig. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to take this cloth brush because I just want to put a little bit more weight around the base where it connects with that tunic. Okay, it's coming to too much of a point back here. I want it to be round. There we go. It's like a friar tuck pig. <laughs> Reminds me of. I want to scoop his nose up even more. And then I'm going to pull his head back and up so he's looking up more and pull his, pull his ears back. So let me save it before I do that. So I'll do that in T-Pose Mesh. So T-Pose Mesh is what you use to pose inside of ZBrush. And that's why it turned all blue because I had that, that, that was my active color. And it'll change based on whatever color you have active, it doesn't matter. And then, uh, Cello, how's it going? <laughs> What's up, Quad? Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this 
And then you can fade it by tap, holding down control and tapping on the surface. Invert the mask and tap on the surface. And then I'm just going to put the gizmo somewhere in here. Just kind of crank it up a little bit more so he's a little more snooty. Stuffy head up in the sky. And just kind of smooth this out where I botched it from moving his head. There we go. Looks better. And then uh, maybe bring his lip up more underneath his nose. Just to... And I turned on topological and put the range to three so I could grab his lip without adjusting the nose. Okay. Now that's done, I can push T pose to sub T and it'll bring it back. Takes four seconds. And now he's more snooty. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's put it in perspective here. Looks like his head is a lot smaller than what I have it. Mm. Let's see. I think I could grab this whole area and scale it down just a little bit. I think I'll try that. So back to T-Pose. And... I need a mirror turn on. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm going to go basically what I had last time. Shrink that whole area. I was trying to go under, up underneath the ears, but maybe I can do it like this. And then grab the ears. There we go. I just want to get that. There we go. Okay, and then just blend out that mask more as much as I can. The more you blend when you move and make big movements, the less you'll destroy your mesh. Okay, so this will be tricky. Because I'm going to scale his whole face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just like, you can see him on the, like, the switching the channels on TV. There's nothing on. Ugh. see maybe like that it's funny because if I shrink his features like this I'll have to pull his mouth way down even further but shrinking his features will make the rest of him look bigger which is funny it's cool All right, that works. Okay, let's see if I can... You can see kind of how I messed up this area here. Let's see if I can do it without messing the mesh up too much. Usually what I do if I'm having to scoot something like this is I'll, I'll put the camera angle so it's looking directly at it as much as possible and then just make these little small nudges. Kind of actually like how it's making this bit of flesh on the side of his mouth. <laughs> it makes him look even more like, hmm, you know? <laughs> So 
so snooty. Let's smooth this part out just a bit. There we go. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Tired of being lazy? Get busy. It's a good time to finally get some of those personal projects out of the way. Level up your skills. All right, let's go back. Watch this big difference. Bum, bum, bum. That was a big difference. You guys usually don't get to see the, my my polishing phase because I I will typically uh, be done and start a new one and just do this polishing stuff on my own um, because it's it's slow and rather boring and I think so anyway. But but it's it's also one of the most important parts. Okay, I want his ear to hang more with the weight. And even even kind of rest on his face a little bit. And then I want him to look a little bit more bored. Hey, what's up, Jorge? And then we've got to give him eyelashes and eyebrows too. That'll help a lot. And these little hairs. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, let's do that next. Um, let's crease. There we go. Okay, I was just kind of smoothing that down. Okay, um, so to, to make his eyel eyelids, you've seen me do eyelids over and over and over again. If you've ever seen my streams, I do it the same way. Another no Luigi's character? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, Sandro. Yeah, Sandro. He he worked for... Well, he's worked all over, but... Um, he helped... I, I believe he helped out on that new uh, Claws movie. Like the K-L-A-U-S. I believe. And he's done some Leica stuff and Walt Disney Company. Yeah, he's done a ton of stuff. Okay. Um, Ian, I will just, uh, I might do a cur maybe curved tubes or just stretch out a sphere or I don't know. There's so many different ways to do it, but that's usually what I do is just, I kind of decide when it's, when I, it's time. <laughs> okay. these off hey Ray um yeah I had the eye wrinkles on it before I on my other one you can see right here see all these eye wrinkles right here I'll, I'll get them back in time Um, is it already Dynamesh? No. I hardly do Dynameshing anymore. Just want to 
picking these guys up. I'm going to give him some thick eyelashes because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> right, Neil? Yeah, that's true. You could do him this way or this way or this way or this way. hide the pink usually eyelashes don't go all the way down like that but I think in his case I'm going to <laughs> that makes me laugh okay and let's put his eyebrows in there But before I do, I think I am going to make his eyes just a little bit smaller and, and raise them up slightly. That's neat, yo. Thanks, Bean. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do... I'm going to T-pose him again. Ooh, dark. Okay, let's go. Make him, there we go. <laughs> Look, I warped his eyeballs. That's pretty funny. Okay, for this, I'm just gonna mask around his eyeballs like this. Whoops, no symmetry, word. I don't know why it decides to turn off symmetry when I go into pose mode. Okay. Kind of want it to fade quite a bit. All right. Then I can scale these down. Let me do local symmetry. Maybe like that. Okay. And go back. Mm -hmm. Now I need to edit. Edit the eye shape underneath here. I messed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have enough geometry right here. I'm gonna have to add a subdivision level here in a minute. I can get these. Okay, let's do the topology brush again. And we'll do these eyebrows. Okay, I think I want one more length in there. You can always cut one in like this and then edit it after the fact pretty easily. Come on, there we go. Mm -hmm. 
And then you just edit it by hand with the move brush. I kind of want this end to hook a little bit more. If you make the polygroups part of the face, are they kept in the transpose master? They are, uh-huh. I think. Now you have me you have me wondering. <laughs> I'll look at it here in just a second. I'm pretty sure they do. I want this straight. There we go. Maybe even straighter. Okay. Now I can get to the Z modeler and extrude polygroup all. And then I want to clear the creases and hit D to subdivide it. There we go. Eyebrows. I kind of want to embed them in the head a little bit. Swixed. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you stopping by. Okay. I think I want to squish his uh, tunic up a little bit and yeah. Hey, Oscar. <coughs> yeah, thanks. It's uh, it's super duper easy. And I have I have some landscaping going on outside, big big tractors and stuff. So. I apologize if you hear some some rumbling in the background. It's not me. It's the tractors. <laughs> no worries, Pablo. Sorry, I'm dancing to music that you guys can't hear. I apologize. <laughs> I might even get this guy rigged up. He's pretty fun. Okay, let's do the little hairs. You guys were asking about the hairs. Oh yeah, Hori, I know, I know. It's It kind of just comes from experience and, you know, practicing and doing all that. <laughs> yeah, Neil, I love, I, I think I might model his, his, uh, compatriot or his friend whatever he's he's listening to i'm gonna put his arms down pretty soon because they're so stumpy and short i love them okay um and i've been working in uh perspective mode which is fine but um okay you're asking about the little hairs. I will I will go Michael Pavlovich on you and show you a couple different ways I can do it. Um, so one thing I could do is the tubes brush. Oh, goodness. Why am I yawning? It's like noon. <laughs> okay, so there's, uh, there's curved tube right here. And this one's okay. But it basically just makes a tube like this. And then here, let's go light with it. I usually make the eyebrow with mask and extract. Um, I will do that. Um, I will do mask and extract 
for more intricate stuff like with lace or you know something that's a little more intricate or even like a whole entire uh like a top or a, a pants or something like that but when it's something small like eyebrows or eyelashes or something it's much more easy to just draw it and it's much more controllable if i just do that so that's why i like to do that um anyway so this is what this is what a curved tube looks like you can see the geometry it's pretty good um and then i can go smaller with my red brush not the blue one but the red one which is if you hover over here and then you can click on the line and it'll make it even smaller like this but you can see it makes it quite dense it's it's quite dense of a of a tube there which is fine it's not a big deal and then i can just um even though it's not in the center of his head, I can then use both of these, um, demon pig. <laughs> I can use both of these hairs. Uh, I can commit them by clicking on the surface of what you drew it on, and then the curve will go away. So now I have these two, these two hairs, and then I can split them out away from the, from the pig, so they're just in their own subtool. And I can move them close like this, Yeah, insect pig, like antenna, right? <laughs> okay, um, and now what I can do is um, just edit these hairs individually by putting them into their own groups by pushing auto group, turning off symmetry, and then I can just move them one at a time by holding down control and tapping on the surface of one to mask it. And then I can just kind of smooth it down so it's pointy. There you go, hair. It's a hair. Um, and then invert that mask and do the same thing to this one. Just kind of smooth it down. There's another hair. And just edit it so it's coming out of the same area. And then I can duplicate it by holding down Control dragging and I can shrink it down and I can invert that mask hit control W to put it in its own poly group too and I'm just kind of tuck that guy over here like that so when you go to randomize stuff like these hairs make sure you you're randomizing it from all directions so not just this direction but also this direction so it's sprouting up in different ways instead of just you know like three on a plane <laughs> you know i kind of like that they're white <laughs> uh i might make them just a little bit gray um, let's fill it there we go and then just kind of I can add a gradient as it comes down towards the head so I can make it just a little bit darker and in the pink the pink side grab the old airbrush and then just make it kind of gradiate towards the head like that so the tips are lighter then let's grab the head I'm going to actually add real subdivision levels. Okay, because I want to do some of these details in here and add some wrinkles and stuff. To pull these wrinkles down the nose. Curve it up. Right? <laughs> Okay, let me see. I think I want to actually make his mouth curve underneath a little bit more. There we go. Because I want him to go like... <laughs> 
Hey, what's up, me? Your your name is all blue. <laughs> Print brushes used to be made of such bristles. Yeah, that's not anymore. <laughs> okay, let me save this because I'm I don't want to lose him. And let's cut in those wrinkles under his eyes. I'm actually gonna use a cloth brush and pull them out. It's funny because I, I tend to like hold my breath <laughs> when I'm making these arcs. All right, got to crank that smooth intensity now. good I don't think I want it that sharp nah okay let me add, just edit these wrinkles on the nose a little bit more I want them to be close up here and then kind of come out away from themselves Okay, um, then we have this little kind of mole thing over here. Let's do that. Let's see, I want to go, I want to go kind of purple with it. Mm, let's try that. Just testing colors. <clears throat> I don't want it to call too much attention to itself. There we go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn symmetry off for this because I'm going to kind of randomize it a little bit. Be one more right here. Okay. And let's put his arms down and then we'll add thickness to his tunic. I always save it before I go into pose mode. He's going to be purple. <laughs> purple pig. Turn on symmetry. Okay, let's just get them kind of posed up here. I need to get rid of his body underneath. I'll clean all this up after I go back. It's going to make a mess. Yeah, it's good. And then I'll pose his arm by itself. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, now his body's poking out there. This is why it's good to keep your clothing uh, single si or uh, single sided because it's much more editable now we can actually edit it from the inside hey how's it going Top 
logical on. Want them not to collide with each other inside down going in down in there. Um, just move and smooth. <laughs> those are my, those are like my favorite go-to. That's what I use the most. Nothing special. Just moving it. Okay, I'm gonna grab this uh, unmasking, of course. I just wanna take this and bend it down. to know which side you're grabbing. Okay, that's gonna have to do. That'll do, pig, that'll do. <laughs> Find it very difficult to look at a single 2D image and convert it into a 3D model. At least two to three images are required. Uh, no, um, well, yes. So I, I agree and I don't agree. So when I was first starting modeling, I would often ask, or I would, I would ask the concept people if they could give me a, mo a drawing from the front and drawing from the side. But as I got better and as I got to be a better modeler, I realized that the three quarter view is the best view to use as a concept. And that's because, um, you can actually kind of see all the things you need to see from just this angle. And it, when you ask a concept artist to draw from the front and the side, it actually kind of loses some of the character that's in the character. So um, I, I tend to like the three quarter view because it keeps the character in there. And then I just, I try and match it the best I can. Okay. Now let's, I'm gonna get rid of the body that I, the parts of the body I don't need. So I just need that arm. Now it looks like he's going. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let's see, whoops, need to grab. It's a wonderful body though. Looks like Kirby. <laughs> okay, I'm going to Z remesh this and keep the groups while I do it. See what it gives me. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, that's um, Rakesh. That's my that's my online course. So if you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff, um, you can go check out that course and join us over there. Okay. Okay. Looks like I have, come on. I think this is all I need. Mm. I need to go up a little bit more on his body. Does that go, no, it doesn't. I picked one too high. There we go. I'm gonna go higher up the arm too. So now if I do auto groups, mirror and weld. Okay. Here we go, let's see if that works. 
That works. That's good enough, I think. Okay, delete hidden. Now we can edit just the arms by themselves. Hey, what's up, 3D Art? How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks. I'm going to combine these two piggy piggy pig toes to the to this mesh so I can manipulate them at the same time. Let's see. Where are those toes? Right there. Okay. Merge down. Okay. How do you extract masked out of the cloth, but only for single-sided mesh? I find it hard and double-sided to work on. Yeah, so I keep I keep my clothes single-sided as long as possible. If you watch last week's episode, you can watch me make these clothes exactly. You can see exactly how I made them. It's kind of hard to explain, uh, but you can just watch watch it back if you'd like. And thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Randy, uh, yes, there will be. I'm, I'm trying to go every other week. I'm seeing how that goes. Okay. And last week I just did, um, I don't know if you saw that, but on the, I hope you're, are you in the new forum? You, uh, I just did some student feedback videos individually rather than during the Q and A. So it worked out. I think I want to Um, Ian, I honestly, for, for the Pixelogic live streams, I typically don't have an end game. I just, I just kind of do it for the stream and that's it. But sometimes I'll take it to print. Sometimes I will, um, sometimes I'll, you know, take it to rigging. This guy is pretty dang funny. So, I mean, I, sometimes I like how they turn out. Uh, so I might send this guy to rig. So he'd be awesome to animate. I want to see inside his mouth, like when he opens his mouth, what it looks like, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. How'd you delete the inner part? So you do, you hide it and then you go to delete hidden right here. And that's under modify topology over in this menu. So this is my custom menu right here. And I give it away for free if you want. It's over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can grab it. Um, my user interface and these brushes. Actually, you can't see the brushes. Hold on a second. Let me resize my ZBrush so you can see them. I'm making a mess here. Uh, yeah, the ga Pixlogic gave me this new frame and it hides my brushes. So I, I forget to, there we go. Yeah, it'd be funny to see his, his fat jiggle, right? When he's running, it's like, boom, boom. <laughs> okay. I really like how his arms are like tucked up into his body. I don't know that I can do that. I'm going to try though. Too 
far. I'm making warbles, that's what's happening. Have you yeah, Mixamo is okay. It's kind of fun. That's yeah, more fun than anything, I guess. I don't know if you can really use it in production, but it's pretty fun. I mean, I guess you could use it in production. It just depends on what you're doing. Okay, let's see for this. How are the tools showing in center? Um, are you talking about, are you talking about this? This is a custom menu that I made. So this does not ship with a regular ZBrush. I made it. And that's what I'm saying. You can go get it for free if you want, or you can do a search on YouTube for ZBrush custom menu. And there's an ask ZBrush where, um, um, gosh, I'm trying to, why can't I, I just, I just totally have, just drew a blank. Not Paul. I'm thinking piggy son. He, he goes away, piggy son. Um, oh my gosh. Who's the guy who does ask is he, I can't believe I just totally, my mind just went blank. Tell me, help me out. Joseph. Thank you. Joseph Drust. So Joseph just did a Ask ZBrush lesson on how to make uh, menus. Okay, thanks guys. Why did my mind just draw a blank? I have no idea. Holy crap. Sorry, Joseph. Okay. Um, I'm going to add some thickness to this now. And I want to crease these edges. There we go. Nice and clean. That's probably too crispy, right? <laughs> oh, thanks, Neil. There you go. There's a link for you. Let's try that. Yep, he's my he's my bot that's not a bot. <laughs> so thank you so much, Neil. I appreciate it. Okay, let's give thickness to now on this tunic. Yeah, let's do the whole thing for a minute. I'm just gonna extrude everything uh, no 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 um all quads all poly quads there we go bevel no it was crease and you can just find it underneath the crease menu Man, it's making some crappy edges. Mm -hmm. Oops. I need to clean up these edges. They're horrible.
must have accidentally grabbed that and moved it somehow. <laughs> VR chat, yeah, yeah. It's like, show me the way. <laughs> Man, what did I do to these edges? Okay, that's that's better. I don't know what I did. Did I miss any questions? Uh, oh, um, how do I project a high res mesh with a poly group to a low res mesh? I want the poly group is a poly you can't do that. Degree, you can't you can't project poly groups, but you can make the poly group the same. Uh, like you'd have to re rebuild it with the polygroups you want. You can't project polygroup. Sorry. It's not a thing. Yeah. It'd be nice, but cannot do it. When is the right time to use divide and dynamesh? Um, I don't use Dynamesh. Well, I, I don't I shouldn't say I don't use Dynamesh, but I don't use it as much as I used to anymore Because we have Sculptress Pro and I like Z Remesher better um, But I divide it when I need the surface detail usually That's when I divide it Okay, I'm actually gonna Extrude this into the inside instead of the outside that's better. Okay. Okay, um, let's see, what do I want to do now? Maybe color up some transitions, maybe? Some gradients, let's do that. Mm, maybe just darker here. And then with this, I want to add some purple down in here. Oops. Symmetrically. And we can add some on his boots, some some kind of gradient. I think I want um, some darker. Oops, no. Come on, grab his boots. Go.
Then I want to add a little bit of thickness to these two. The crease on the front here. Are you using the skin shade material? Yeah, it's just skin shade four. That's my favorite one. That's pretty much what I use all the time. Okay, let me save this. And then I'm going to do a, just a little bit more posing on it. Let me do three. Okay. Looks like an ice cream cone. You can stick them in an ice cream. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Let me paint. I'm going to paint a little bit on his eyes just to give him some shadow. doing anything yes it is okay mask by intensity there we go go a little bit darker even no There we go. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Grab. I'm gonna make those a little bit darker at his head. All right, um, I wish I had, I wish I had a uh, key shot installed right now. In your starting project, what do you feel is a good inflate number for keys that fit well? Um, ooh, let's see. I kind of visualize, or excuse me, goodness. I kind of just eyeball it to be like 0 0.02. I don't, I don't really have a specific number. I just eyeball it so there's a space around there. Yeah. I wish I had an answer. <laughs> I don't really think about it that much. Okay. Um, now I just want to add a little bit of, uh, well, let's see. Let me apply this. Okay, and then I just want to add a little crease down the front. How long have I, I uh, how long have I been using ZBrush? About, duh, duh, duh. 
I would say seven, five to seven years ish. Something like that. Okay, let me go to Tipo's mesh. Let's turn it to gray. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to invert my normals on my tunic there. Here, let me let me go back. Oops. How you paint with two RGB intensity is your brush, but must increase that to get the same results. Um. So this this is just an airbrush, so it's very very soft gradient, super soft. So, um, yeah, a two, a two uh, RGB and two intensity, two RGB is that should give you tons of color when you push. But I don't know. <laughs> Any pro tips for beginners? Um, not not that I could cover in this in a short amount of time, but just um I, I hate to say it but practice practice get in there and make as many models as you can um spend more time on the block out than you do the actual polish phase and make block out after block out until you're comfortable with it is my advice okay let's flip this okay do it. When I use it in high poly version, don't do much. It doesn't do much. So if I go to the sphere, okay, so if I go to the sphere and I subdivide it up to so it's 3.5 million right now. This is 3.5 million, right? I'll grab my hard paintbrush and fill it with this kind of white color, right? And then I'll go to the airbrush, change the color to like this red. And I have my pen. That's, that's what it should look like when you push on it. Super subtle. It's like blush. And you can push hard and just... Just kind of keep going and it'll slowly build up. So does it do that? That's what it should look like. Make sure you start with the ruler file that comes with that comes with ZBrush. So it should have this ruler in it. Open it up. It doesn't come with ZBrush. It comes with my my brushes. So make sure you're starting with this. Okay. It gives you color, but very low intensity. Hmm. Yeah, that's strange. I've not had the... I've, it, it's always worked the same for me. I'm not sure what would be going on. When, you're, when you extract using mask, do you use the extract tool in the sub-tool menu? Um, yeah. I don't, I don't use it very much. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just this right here. Extract right there. Okay, let's go back to pose this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just making some really big pose, just pose changes just to make him asymmetrical.
Sorry, I'm just concentrating for a second. Okay. Once you pose, is there a way to keep symmetry? Uh, usually not. Um, there is posable symmetry, but I hardly ever use it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's, that's why I get it as far as I can possibly get it in in a, in symmetry, and then I pose it, and then I save off its own version. Um, let's see here. <laughs> uh Let's see. Everyone's buying up all the good 3D printers. Uh, I, me personally, I don't use filament printers. I have, um, I'd use resin printers, but that's me. So they're all out. That's crazy. Go straight or down. Let's see. Da, 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 da. How do I get clean edges when I mask a part of the character, for example, the nose, to separate it into different poly groups? Um, I don't know. Um, the be the cleanest edge you can get is two separate objects. The Ender three. I've not heard of that one. Some experience or story on some of my projects that I can remember. So um, I worked on Disney Infinity. I was the, at the very end of the project, I was the department head on that, for that team at Disney Interactive. That's what you see, all these characters right here behind me. These are from Disney Infinity. So I modeled a bunch of those. Um, here's, this is Boba Fett right here from Disney Infinity. And this is a personal project, a, pirate that I did and this is from my 3D character workshop course this Kate character right here and this one is a cowboy riding a dinosaur that I made during this live stream so is the mouse that's right in front of me this guy right here so um no I didn't model Baymax um my friend Christopher Wright modeled Baymax how do you style an object on its edge so that it's straight without ripples um, I just move the points by hand. I keep it really low polygon, and then I just move the points. Um, you can also use the clip brush to keep them to keep them straight. Let's see. Hold on a second. I just noticed something. He's he's kind of square out here. I want to make him rounder. There we go. Rounder. That's good. That's better. Except I introduced some warbles. Dang it. So like, see how this is not straight? I'll just go do it manually to make it better looking. Your finger laser pointer. Hey, <laughs> what's up, Pedro? Yeah, this right here. <laughs> right here. Right here. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, I made the pirate girl during the Pixelogic live streams. This is true. I'm just gonna take this down a little bit. I keep seeing things that I keep, I, keep, I want to tweak. Hello from Jamaica. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Okay. So the second character, let me see if I can pull it up here. Mm. That is not it. Where did it go? Sorry, one second. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it went. <laughs> hmm. I lost my the original image. I'll have to find it again. Hey from Brazil. Hello, Israel. How do you paint on an object? Marking the pixels well? Defining your drawing well? Um you mean okay, you just have to have enough resolution. So like this ball. This ball has 3.5 million points. So if I grab this color, this red, and I use this paintbrush, it's gonna make really nice, clean lines. Do I use Marmoset? Yeah, I do. Love it. So see how clean that is? If you had fewer points, like say this has 3,400 points, you can see right up here in this corner, and if I try to paint it, it's not going to be nice and sharp because there's not enough resolution. Does that make sense? So you have to have it enough, enough resolution to be clean. And you can mask it off and then paint an edge and clear the mask and it's pretty sharp. Okay. Hello from India. Hello. Oh yeah, thanks Neil. You're always the... There you go. Okay. There you go. So this pig is looking at this guy. And it looks like he's telling some tall tale. He's like... And then... And then I cut him down with one swath. And the guy's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just love the look on his face. So this is, this is Sandro's uh, Instagram. I would love to model this guy. He's really cool. Look at those hands. Those are awesome. But the shapes on his face, huge nose and these crazy ears. Yeah, this guy's great. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's, it's, it's his tie and his pants are all the way. <laughs> his pants are up to here. That's hilarious. Okay. Where did I get that brush? Uh, I made it. So these are my brushes. If you'd like to go get them, I offer them up for free on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can check them out. I'm sure Neil will post a link here shortly. Thank you, Neil. And uh, yeah, so you can get all of these with this this kind of an icon. These are brushes that I made based off of other brushes that have been around. Like this is the Damien Standard brush that I've tweaked. And this is the uh, Ma Cut that I've tweaked. And this is the SK Polish that I've tweaked. So they're, they're my brushes, but in collaboration with other artists. And this is my insert multi IMM brush. Why are you invisible? Oh, sorry. I had about Boolean. Sure. Sorry, useful. <laughs> Tell me. Ask, ask a question. There's a ton of comments, so it's hard for me to keep up on all of them. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Hello from Mal Malaysia. It's 3.40 in the morning. That's the way you do it.
how do I get a clean edge here when I subs when I subtract? Sub Let's see. Um, let's see. I don't know that I have the answer to that question. So let's see. Whoops. Let me just try it. I'm going to try it. A softer bevel? Um, okay. The only, the way I've done softer bevels, well, with live boolean it just does not give you soft bevels unfortunately it's just going to give you the, the hard edge around what where you subtract something out of something else so here let me sh let me kind of show you mm -mm -mm. who you want to ask is michael pavlovich when he's around i don't do much live boolean stuff or hard edge stuff i'm mostly an organic character person but i'll try Sorry, I don't know why I didn't see your comments. I apologize. You only asked like 50 times, right? <laughs> okay. You can dynamesh the piece in the end for softening the edges. Oh, Pedro would know. No worries. So Pedro would know. So dynamesh it at high resolution. Okay, let's try it. Pedro knows. All right. Um, so let me, let me just make a cube. And we're going to live boolean this out of here. Ba -ba -ba, split unmasked points. And then we're going to turn this to negative. Turn live boolean on. And shove this in here. Okay. Uh, not... I'm not necessarily. We'll see. Hold on a second. Okay, so we have we have this live boolean out of here. And what I usually do is I like to put this in a folder. So I'll just call it bool folder. And we'll shove this in it too. And then I like to click on the gear and do this boolean with subdivisions because let me see. Never mind, I don't have dynamic subdies on. That's fine. Okay, so I'll just do boolean folder and it'll make a new sub tool with these boolean out of it. Here, let me fill it with the color so you can't, it doesn't look dumb. Okay, so Pedro, are you saying to subdivide it at this, at this point? Because I think what you're saying there, um, useful is that you have all these triangles and you can't make a nice bevel, right? So, um, let me, so I think you dynamesh at this point. If I'm not mistaken. Da, 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 da. Oh, I don't have that plugin installed. Dynamesh is one of the options. Okay. Let me hide that. Um, so let's go, let me duplicate this. Da, 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 da. Geometry, Dynamesh, let's Dynamesh it about, well, let's crank it a little bit. Dynamesh Master, I don't have it installed yet on this build. Like smooth, smooth these out after you Dynamesh like this. Is that what you're talking about? Or let's dynamesh it a little bit higher. Um, you can do a, an overall smooth to your entire mesh by going to def, deformation and then cranking up this smooth. Where is it? I can't see it. There's too much. There it is. Smooth. It's not strong enough though. You have to do it 50 times. Thirty-five arrayed pieces, <laughs> yeah, they, to do by hand. 
So, I mean, that's that's fairly smooth, right? Yeah, it'd be a pain in the ass to do an array, right? With a whole bunch of crap going on. But that'll give you a fairly smooth bevel. So, it's an option. Um, but yeah, I would I would check when Michael Pavlovich goes next, and he I I can guarantee you he would know. Or uh, Paul Gabry when he goes live. Sorry, I don't, don't have a better answer for you. But if you go to um, ZBrush Live and you can check on the schedule there. So uh, just click on the schedule right here on the top left, and you'll see when. Who's going next? Um, Thomas Thomas might have an answer for you. He goes tonight, later on. He's a jewelry maker, so he does a lot of hard edge stuff. You might not, yeah. So. And then Paul goes tomorrow from five to seven. So Paul would know for sure. Anyway, hope, hopefully that will get you an answer you need. Sorry about that. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Anyway, I'm done with this guy. Um, yeah, sorry I missed all your questions, man. I feel like a schmo. Sorry about that. All right. And if I had Keyshot installed, I'd, I'd throw him over into render, but I don't. I'm gonna smooth this, smooth his sleeves out a little bit the bottom of his tunic out a little bit I just picture you like being like Stewie mommy mom mom mommy mom <laughs> can I hide the shirt there's nothing underneath the shirt it's gone his body is gone I deleted it But if you want me to, sure. Ta -da. <laughs> uh, can the character be used for, for production now? No. I would need to take it into, uh, I would have to do retopology. And this is posed, so this is almost ready for print, like 3D print or rendering, if I wanted to render it. Um, but it's not ready for production of any kind. I would need to go, um, Retopologize it and then do the UVs for it and then pro project from the high to the low the maps and then put it into a game engine or a film something like that so All right, Ian take care man. I think I'm gonna wrap this up a little bit early today just since I'm done with him uh, But thanks again for watching guys, uh, and I, I hope I hope you guys are uh, getting your getting uh using this time well and sculpting on your time off if you do have time off um so thanks you're welcome yep yep <laughs> even with the guts gone it can be printed and the result will still be good no i will have to dynamesh it all together so dynameshing it all together will get rid of all the interior geometry i would have to make sure it all is watertight before i 3d print it um, so, and like I said, if you want to learn this kind of stuff, I, I teach a course, it's called 3D Character Workshop, and I do go over 3D printing and how to prep your models for 3D printing, how to combine everything together, and how to get it, how to key, add keys, all sorts of stuff. So, if you're interested, you can check it out, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, or if you're just interested in my user interface or my brushes, you can go over there and grab them, they're free, over on my website. Thank you, Neil. All right. Yep. You're welcome, guys. Have a good one. Stay safe. Stay inside. Keep up the the, the social distancing and don't get sick, please. <laughs> and if you are, please get better. So, all right. Take care. Um, yes, there will be a Q&A Friday. So, all right. That's for my students. Anyway. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one. And we'll see you next Monday with a brand new character. I think I'm going to sculpt the 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 brother character to this one or whatever his the guy he's looking at I'm, i think i might sculpt that guy so we'll see all right take care guys we'll see ya have a good one bye